In the first video of this series, we looked at some simple and direct ways that we could use to add some customization and personalization to our basic default graph. In this video, we're going to continue looking at graph customization, focusing on the options found within the Format Graph dialog. To access the Format Graph dialog, you can either click on the Format Graph button in the toolbar, or simply double click in the graphing area itself. The dialog that appears has a lot of options and may seem a bit overwhelming at first. But the choices you can make in this dialog are all relatively intuitive and will start to become very familiar as we work through various options available and you begin customizing graphs of your own. We'll start on the Appearance tab of this dialog, and right at the very top, you can see that there is a drop down that allows you to select which data set you'd like to customize. You can choose an individual data set to modify, or you can select to change all data sets at once. As a shortcut to apply customizations to all of the data sets at once, you can hold the control button down on your keyboard, which will cause a small globe to display next to your cursor. This indicates that you're making changes to all of the data sets. The next section of this tab provides available options for the graph style depending on the family and type of graph you've selected. Under Appearance, you can select how you want the data to be shown. These options are similar to the option that we saw when choosing our graph type in the previous video. For example, you can choose to show only a single point for the mean or median. You can choose to show mean or median with error bars, or you can choose to show each replicate. If you choose each replicate as we've done here, you can choose to have the points of the graph aligned or staggered using the options under plot. Alternatively, if you choose mean or median with error, you can use plot to identify how you want the error to be displayed. As standard deviation, as standard error of the mean, the 95% confidence interval, or the range of the data. The order and presence of the objects that can be customized in the next section may vary depending on the family and type of graph that you're customizing. However, for each graph, this section will provide appropriate options for displaying symbols, bars, spikes, and drop lines, error bars, connecting lines and curves, area fill on the graph, and other options such as bars and boxes, which is not shown here as our graph type doesn't include any of these objects. Once again, depending on the graph type being used and the options chosen under Appearance and Plot, you can choose to toggle some of these object sections on or off, while others may be disabled entirely. For example, we currently have Mean and Error selected under Appearance, near the top of this tab. Because of this, we have the option of customizing the appearance and settings for the error bars on the graph, or the option to toggle the error bars on or off entirely. If we switch our selection back to each replicate under appearance, you can see that the options for error bars have simply been disabled. In the symbol section of this dialog, we can choose to change the color, shape, size, and border options for the symbols shown on the graph. If I wanted to change only the symbols for group A, I could use the drop down menus to pick a new symbol, a new size, and then click Apply. You'll notice that this only changed the data set that we have selected at the top, data set A in this case. If we either hold down the control key on our keyboard or choose change all data sets, we can choose to change the symbol shape, size, and border thickness for both data sets. Note that as long as we don't manually select an option while making global changes, each data set will retain its own setting. This is why in order to change all data sets, I needed to reselect the symbol shape and size. However, as long as I don't manually select a color, each data set will keep its own color. If we were to change the color while change all data sets was selected, however, that color would be applied to all of the data sets as you would expect. Let's make a few more changes to our graph. Let's choose to show the connecting lines, change its thickness and pattern, Set it to connect the means instead of each replicate, and choose to leave a gap at symbols. Let's also choose to show the area fill. We want the fill to show below the line, and although we could change the colors, we would likely want to do that individually for each data set, not globally. For now, let's just click Apply. Immediately, we see a problem. Because our first data set has values that are higher on average than our second data set, 
we can't see the majority of the area fill for the second data set. It's covered by the first. One way around this could be through the use of semi-transparent colors for the area fills. Let's select each data set individually and adjust the transparency of the fill color. You can now see that both area fills can be seen when we click Apply. However, some of the pink symbols appear darker as they are behind the blue semi-transparent area fill. To address this, we can utilize another useful method for arranging the order of data sets on a graph. On the Format Graph dialog, we can click on the second tab at the top, Data Sets on Graph. The first thing you'll see on this tab is the large section that will list each of the data sets shown on the graph. In this window, you can click and drag to reorder the data sets however you'd like. For example, we can drag data set A down so that it is below data set B. When we click Apply, we can now see that the pink symbols are in front of the blue area fill and thus appear to be the correct color again. Other useful tools on this tab include the ability to add, replace, or remove data sets on the graph. In fact, you can add or replace data sets from other data tables in the same PRISM file, allowing you to graph multiple sets of data together without having to copy the data into a single data table. With a large number of data sets, it's also sometimes easier to use the reorder buttons to organize the order of the data sets on the graph. You can choose to send a data set to the top or the bottom of a list, move it up or down one position, or reverse the order of the entire list of data sets at once. Finally on this tab, there are additional options that can be used to modify data sets individually. Depending on the graph type, these options will be somewhat different. For example, for an XY graph, you can choose to nudge the data in the direction of a specified number of X and Y units. This can be useful when data from multiple data sets perfectly overlap. I would, however, caution against using large values when nudging your data, as this obviously results in the data appearing at a new location and could skew its interpretation. For data sets with a very large amount of data, you can also choose to have Prism graph one row of data, then skip a defined number of rows. This choice may help speed up graphing, but comes at the obvious cost of excluding data on the graph. Let's look at a new tutorial data set for a new graph type to explore the remaining options on the Format Graph dialog. We'll close this dialog and create a new data table. We'll select Grouped, ensure that Start with Sample Data to Follow Tutorial is selected, and then choose Ordinary three data sets under two-way ANOVA and click Create. As before, we'll simply go straight to the graph. In the Change Graph dialog, you can see that our options are a bit more extensive for this family of graphs than they were for our first example, but the concept is exactly the same. Using the tabs, you can choose to show individual values as a scatter plot, a scatter plot with bars, and other options. You can choose the Box and Violin tab to show the data as box and whisker plots, or as a violin plot. But we're going to choose summary data so that we can create a simple bar graph. We can choose to start with interleaved, separated, or stacked bars. Let's just choose interleaved and click OK. Just as I showed in the previous video, you can adjust the size of the graph, change the fonts, or apply color schemes as you'd like. Let's change the color scheme to colors to more easily distinguish between the groups of bars on our graph before we look at some of the other features in the Format Graph dialog. To open the Format Graph dialog, we could double click on the graphing area as before, or click on the Format Graph button in the toolbar. This time, when the Format Graph dialog opens on the Appearance tab, you may notice that the specific options available have changed slightly. We have different options under the Style Appearance dropdown, and the objects on the graph that you can customize are different, now including bars and boxes. However, the concept is exactly the same, and you can customize these using the same process we looked at previously. If we click on the Datasets on Graph tab, we still have the ability to rearrange the datasets as before, but we also now have some new arrangement options for this family of graphs at the bottom of the dialog. These options all deal with how we want Prism to display each dataset on the graph in relation to the dataset before it. That may sound confusing at first, so let's look at a couple of examples to get you more comfortable with this concept. Obviously, if we have the first dataset selected, there's no previous dataset or dataset before it, so we can't make adjustments in these options. So let's actually select the last dataset. Now we see that these options are available to modify. Originally, we had selected to show an interleaved bar graph, and that's reflected here, with each dataset interleaved with the one before. However, we could choose to change dataset C to be stacked, 
or superimposed with dataset B. We saw in our previous example that the order of the datasets in this window determine the order of which datasets are shown in front or on top of the others. Note that if superimposed is selected for bar graphs, Prism will automatically show the smaller dataset in front, regardless of the data order, so that a smaller bar isn't completely hidden behind a larger bar. Finally, in addition to interleaved, stacked, and superimposed, we can also choose to have dataset C separated with respect to dataset B. When we click Apply, we see that while dataset B is still interleaved with dataset A, dataset C is now separated off by itself. We can further emphasize this separation using the last tools on this tab, including the ability to add a vertical line between the selected dataset and the previous one, or adding an additional gap between these datasets. The next tab of the Format Graph dialog contains a large number of options for graph settings, which, again, are going to be largely dependent on the family of graphs that you're using. In this case, we can choose to show the graph in either the horizontal or the vertical orientation. We can also specify where the baseline occurs for our bars. For example, we may wish to have the bars begin at y equals 50. We can see that this value is actually larger than some of the bars on the graph, so when we click Apply, those bars now go down instead of up from the baseline. We can also choose to either show or hide the baseline from the graph. Let's hide it. The next section provides a number of options for setting the spacing of the graph. You can control the amount of space, if any, that Prism leaves for blank data in the data table, the amount of space between bars of a single group, additional space between groups of bars, and the amount of space before the first and after the last bar on a graph. For example, let's change the space between adjacent data to 0% and click Apply. These are all very small ways that you can personalize the feel of your graphs without dramatically changing their presentation. Note that you can also choose to format individual bars or points without changing an entire dataset by right-clicking or control-clicking on the desired bar and choosing the option Format This Bar. If you choose to apply an individual formatting to one or more bars, you can choose to remove individual formatting here in the Format Graph dialog and revert all bars or points back to the formatting of their dataset. Finally on this tab, a very minor feature, but one that many people really like, is the ability to choose if the legend icons for the bars are displayed as a rectangle or a square. The last tab of the Format Graph dialog is the Annotations tab, and is unique to bar graphs. This set of options provides yet another way that you can customize these graphs. We can turn on annotations on our graph by checking the box beside Write Values In or Above the Bars, which enables numerous other options for customization. You can choose which values you want shown, if you want the text oriented horizontally or vertically, the position of the annotation, either above the bar on error bar, within the bar at the top, or within the bar at the bottom of the bar, and options for formatting the value being displayed. Let's say I choose to show the plotted value, the mean in this case, with horizontal text, above the bar and error bar, in decimal format, with one decimal place. When I click OK, you can now see that the graph has been automatically labeled with the appropriate values. And I should note here that if the data for any of these bars changes in the data table, both the value displayed and the position of the annotation will change automatically. In the next video, we'll look at one more important set of options for customizing your graph, those options found in the Format Axes dialog. We'll keep using this same graph, so you can either continue now or save this graph to explore those options later. Thanks for watching. Thank you.